thank you very much. Um, my name is Charlie Vandenberger. I work for Adyen. Um, Adyen is probably the most well-known company you've never heard of. Uh, we process the payments of the likes of Netflix, Uber, Spotify, uh, but also hospitality giants such as Hilton and Belmont. Um, today is all about uh, innovation and technology. I'd like to invite my panel on board. We have Raed from Miral. We have Hadi from Louvre Hotels, and then we have Ahmed from Millennium. Good morning. Um, we'd like to start off with maybe doing a, a round of <coughs> quick introductions. Uh, if you could tell a little bit more about yourself and your organization. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Hadi Mukherzil from uh, Louvre Hotels Group. I handle the uh, brand and system services for the group in the Middle East, North Africa region. Good morning, I'm Ahmed Kiki. I'm uh, Vice President of Technical Services and Projects for Millennium, Middle East and Africa. We currently have 200 hotels, 50 of which are in the Middle East, as the area that we cover. Good morning, everyone. My name is Radik Hale, and I'm the Executive Director of Digital and Technology at Miral. Um, just uh, curious, who knows Miral in this uh, group? <laughs> so, uh, Miral is the leading creator of uh, immersive experiences in Abu Dhabi when it comes to uh, leisure and entertainment. Uh, our portfolio includes, uh, but not limited to, Warner Brothers, Ferrari World, Etihad Arena, and the recently launched uh, SeaWorld, which I hope you all had the chance to visit. Uh, my responsibility is uh, to overlook the technology blueprint uh, from strategy to operations. I also look over all things digital, including the digital customer experience uh, at the group level and its subsidiaries. I'm also responsible for the data side of things, which means I uh, support my organization to becoming a data-driven organization, which is very important for us. Plus, I lead the AI strategy. And uh, I work every day with my colleagues to put a smile on our customers' faces, which is very important for us. Uh, I'm delighted to be here with you guys, and I look forward for an amazing and a fruitful discussion. Yeah, we've, uh, we've pretty much done the panel three times already. <laughs> we, had a, we had a good conversation before the session. Um, so let's, let's dive right in. Um, so what does innovation mean for your organization, and kind of how is that reflected in day-to-day -day operations? Uh, Hadi, do you want to kick off? Uh, synergy, to synergize uh, the operations, basically. Uh, to have efficiency is one thing. Uh, as an example, we have one of our leading brands, which is called Companil. Uh, we have a full smart hotel, which has been running for the past four years. Nice. And getting a GOP nowadays is around 8 to 9%. So because less staff in the property, as you all know, because the robot is doing a thing. This is one thing I would uh, say. And if Raid or uh, Ahmed want to add something. Yeah, I would like to uh, add uh, to that. For us, uh, innovation is very important uh, to meet our targets. And I know that uh, maybe the word sounds uh, cliche and a buzzword in, in many cases. But I assure you, for Miral, it is uh, a, uh, an imperative has been for us to innovate in order to reach uh, our targets. And maybe allow me to elaborate on this a little bit. Uh, we have to look at our sector. Our sector is very competitive. Um, I don't, uh, I remember being able to, uh, like if you look at aviation, if you look at uh, tourism of, uh, and travel, I was able to buy an airline ticket way before I was able to open an online banking, for example. So our sector is, is very uh, comp uh, competitive, and I would say the competition is fierce. So that's one aspect. Another aspect is that Miral, we pride ourselves of uh, being uh, efficient and lean. And this has been the secret of our uh, success. And this positioned ourselves to uh, be an attractive investment vehicle for our sponsors. So if you want to stay lean and you, if you want to uh, stay competitive at the same time, it's important to innovate. innovate uh, innovation uh, becomes uh, uh, the answer. And uh, with innovation, you can magnify the output, you can, 
You can always avoid mediocre and average uh, uh, deliverables, which is essential for us to be successful. And, and we are unique that we are part of the full cycle from ideation to development all the way to operating our, uh, our experiences. And for each phase, there's different kinds of innovation. Uh, in ideation, we have a special department <coughs> that has brilliant people that they think day in, day out of how to innovate. And, you, and I hope you see this on the ground from this very same island that is supported by the indoor <coughs> theme park concept. Uh, we have an autonomous car, proof of concept, yeah. uh, autonomous transportation that uh, we have been working on. Uh, the first uh, themed hotel uh, in the world, uh, I'm, I'm uh, referring to Warner Brothers, uh, and the list uh, continues. Even for development, we're looking at um, uh, digital twins to be able to introdu introduce efficiency, and for operations, of course, the uh, list uh, goes on from f uh, facial recognition to also metaverse for mice, uh, AI, generative AI, and so forth. So overall, we're inspired from within to innovate, and we're very proud that we're constantly increasing our portfolio. Yeah, really pushing the envelope there, uh, Miral. That's, uh, that's amazing. And uh, Ahmed, do you want to add anything on, uh, on what it means for your organization? Well, for us, it takes, uh, it takes a lot. We, we basically adopt ideas, uh, strategies, and technologies to enhance our guest experiences, uh, to improve uh, our performance in the competitive market. Uh, and this goes into multiple uh, criteria that we, we deal with in uh, daily operations, uh, such as, for example, collecting guest data to understand their preferences and understand what do they like in order to anticipate their needs rather than attending to their needs. Uh, collecting staff information so our colleagues would, uh, would be uh, participating in, uh, in uh, employment engagement, sur employees engagement surveys so we can gather the information of how can we do better for them because a happy, uh, a happy employee gives a happy guest. Uh, also, we're, we're, since uh, our CEO joined uh, Tahir Kazim, he's, we're trying to move into a data-driven organization. So, uh, believe it or not, but data scientists are now required in hospitality. <laughs> uh, we gather a lot, of, uh, a lot of data and uh, putting a lot of softwares in the back end uh, to, to try to gather the data that we require. To, to start working on what guests actually need. In the old days, hotels were, uh, when they started, they were accommodation, they were bed. And that's, that's all what you got. Uh, and then evolved into a bed and breakfast. And then it evolved into a bed and food service. Uh, today, it's about experience. The, the difference between this hotel and the next hotel is what experience can you give? Both will have a ballroom, both will have a bed, both will have uh, uh, a, res a restaurant. Uh, what differentiates is what experiences you're giving. And in the integration of innovation in our day-to-day -day operation, particularly in the back end of our operations, uh, helps us understand better the requirement uh, of, we, we, we currently, for example, we have 11 brands in Belgium at the moment. Uh, two of them, and we're increasing this, uh, as, uh, for now two of them are lifestyle hotels because there is a demand for lifestyle hotels. Yeah. Uh, people are, they don't, they're not looking anymore for uh, luxury, fancy stays. They want practical, uh, more fast-paced uh, stays so they can come do whatever, stay in, in the hotel, do the thing, and then go out and get things done to, for what they came for originally. Yeah. So we're trying to adapt to all these ever-changing needs of our new guests now joining hospitality. Challenge, if you allow me to add to this, Ahmed brought a very important point, which is innovation from up top. He mentioned his CEO, who ha is uh, pushing them into this direction. And similarly, in our case, because I believe if innovation doesn't come from up top, it's, it's going to be more challenging. And, and this is kind of the culture and the process that we have uh, at Miral. We're constantly being inspired by our top leaders from our group CEO, from our chairman, to push and uh, push us in this direction, think this way. We even have KPIs, and our balance scorecard has innova uh, innovation KPIs uh, that as part of our assessment. And uh, at the end of the day, it's people. It's us having uh, the eye for talent and having the eye for people who are capable and willing to think outside of the box. Oh, absolutely, and 
I can, I can also imagine that uh, with innovation in, in technology and, and investments in technology, there's a lot of, uh, kind of investment involved, right? Um, and what is driving the investment decisions in, in your organization? Is it purely ROI driven or what, what, are, what are things that you take into consideration? Uh, maybe how do you want to kick off? Um, I think um, basically for pre procurement, for example, uh, in our uh, brand, uh, we have a design team who will do everything and we have the preferred suppliers with no commission where each uh, developer can choose who to do the work with. Mm -hmm. So it's all under one umbrella, under one space, mm -hmm. which will uh, save time and will be under one uh, way or part, basically. Yeah. But, but when you kind of make investments for innovation, like is, are the decisions purely ROI driven or is it also just because it's the right thing to do? Uh, no, it's both. It's the right thing to do, it's ROI. Yeah. What? Well, we have uh, we have multiple criteria. So ROI undeniably holds uh, a considerable weight in the in the formula to evaluate our investment decision. However, there are more uh, comes on top of our priorities: risk assessment, uh, mm. data privacy. If we are going to technology innovation in particular, or uh, in or uh, uh, implementing new technologies, we have to understand the track record of the business partner that we're dealing with. Uh, what will be the impact on our uh, guest data? Uh, that's one part of it. The other part is, does it align with our strategy? Uh, does it align with our sustainability strategy? Does it align, does it help us uh, participate in our com local community uh, for our, uh, to, in to improve or to support our CSR uh, responsibilities? Uh, there is a lot of factors that we consider in, in, in an investment decision that it depends on each, wh where are we investing, where are we investing, who's the business partner, what, what will be the impact, and who are we, uh, who will be affected by this investment. Okay. Uh, definitely, uh, we're always seeking the proper ROI and to innovate with purpose. Um, we uh, always uh, look at the customer front and center in all of our innovation uh, investments and we always look to move the right KPIs in the right direction. <coughs> we also believe that if you innovate to increase the customer satisfaction, good things will happen uh, automatically and the right KPIs will move in the right direction. But allow me to share with you maybe one use case where there was more to it uh, than that specifically. Uh, I'm referring to our uh, chat GPT integration that we launched on our website in May. And I'm proud to say that we were the first in UAE and the first in the region within leisure and entertainment to do this open AI Azure integration. And forgive me now, I, I might get a little geeky because this is a <laughs> passionate subject of mine, but um, again, our group CEO, he, he saw the, uh, uh, the, the trend, uh, and I think you guys all know the numbers, uh, isn't it like 100 million adopters in two months or something of that nature? Uh, the, the fastest uh, trend in the history of mankind. So um, our group CEO knew that we have to get a piece of this, we have to understand the technical details of this trend, and indeed, he met with the COO of OpenAI in February, and they had a brainstorming session. The output of that session planted the seeds for our AI strategy today. And the ask was, we need to learn this technology. We need to uh, get all the technical details under our belt as a competitive edge. A and sure enough, this is today helping us to take our chatbot to the next level. Uh, our team now knows all these intricate details uh, about prompt engineering, about introducing embeddings in our proprietary content so that it's consumed uh, by the machine learning algorithms, all the parameters of tweaking the AI brain from temperature, from top priority, and all the other techie stuff. Uh, we know this stuff, so now we can align it to business needs. So yes, ROI is very important, but in this particular case, I saw that it was actually the speed of learning as a competitive edge. Yeah. And that was a little different and a little refreshing for us to uh, take on. Yeah, super cool. I, I saw it uh, the other day and it's, uh, it works really well. So congratulations on that. Yeah, thank you. Um, 
So uh, needless to say, um, uh, you're obviously investing in, in AI. Uh, maybe, maybe the other two, uh, what kind of investment decisions are you currently making? In other words, kind of where do you see your industry going? So the, for, for us, I don't know if, if everybody knows it, but hospitality has been uh, lagging adoption of technology because there is a lot of security that we have to take care of before going further because we, there is a lot of data that we have for our guests and we have to protect their privacy. However, uh, there, there are multiple things that we've seen a change in trend, especially after COVID-19. For example, five years ago, uh, Everybody used to go to a hotel, check in, take his key card, and go to the room. Today, it's part of our standards, for example, that I must have an online access control system, so I have keyless entry. I have a, a mobile key entry. It's not, it, before it was, it was an optional thing to have, it's nice to have, now it's a must. We can't, we can't really ignore this. And this keeps going forward. We've been lagging in, uh, in adopting AI, however, we are taking the steps now. Uh, but one of the things that we are trying to do, because as, as, as hotel operators, we operate hotels for other owners. And the most important thing for us is how can the owner benefit from the real estate they are building. So the, the change that we are that we're currently doing is, you remember in the old days we used to have a big server room. And this server room used to occupy everything. We used to have everything on premise. Uh, now we're moving all of this now to the cloud, so the, the owners will not need to have a server room anymore. Uh, they can utilize this real estate into other uh, areas that can generate more revenue for them. Uh, how can we support our guests? How can we utilize, actually, AI in anticipating guest need rather than in, in prediction, rather than uh, attending to them? Uh, and, and, we're, and how can we adopt technology in how do you understand? And this is a this is a bit of a of an out of the box thing that we're exploring at the moment. Is how do you understand? How could you understand the mood of the guest so you can change things in the room to improve to help him improve his mood? Uh, and we're talking about smart walls, smart glass. Uh, how can I change the color of the room instead of painting it into another uh, another color that makes him calmer or makes him more active or and so on. And these are all works in prog progress. We have a lot of, I, I, can, I lost the count, I think we have about six or seven proof concepts that are going in different, uh, different properties uh, that we're trying things out uh, to see how we can uh, take it forward. But it's a long way to go. It's an ongoing thing that we have to keep going, uh, keep doing, because it's, it's, a, it's a, an evolving market. It's evolving. We're dealing with humans. Uh, there's evolving needs, and it's going to ever evolve. Very cool. Well, that's exciting to, uh, to hear. Um, Hadi, what, what about you? What, are, what is Dover Hotel Groups uh, currently investing in, and uh, where do you see it going? Investing heavily in the distribution systems. Uh, they just created a new uh, CRS for the company w with the connectivity of Synexis, yeah. which everybody knows. Uh, as I said, investing into distribution heavily. Uh, Obviously, they're working on the AI and the chat GPT, etc. like uh, Mr. Raid and Mr. Ahmad said. Uh, these are uh, the main things, as well as um, some uh, the design, as I said before, yeah. which is in-house for some brands. Basically, that's it. Very cool, yeah. And uh, Raad, uh, next to uh, next to AI, um, what else is uh, is in the pipeline? Um, th there are a couple of uh, other uh, uh, trends that we're looking at. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, metaverse, uh, IoT within the theme parks. But frankly, uh, Chaling, uh, it's all about AI for us. We're we're double downing on on this trend. Mm -hmm. We're going heavily in investing into a three-year uh, AI strategy. Uh, that we are uh, very excited about to allow us, remember I talked about efficiency earlier, to allow us to do more with less yeah. and to allow us to remove further friction points from the customer experience. So if you tell me where the industry is going, it's going into removing more friction points, 
it's going to the, uh, uh, creating more delightful and to dazzle the customer in a, in a new innovative way to make them happier. I mean, the examples that you gave, Ahmed, were very impressive, Saraha. It's uh, really uh, uh, in line with uh, this trend that we are talking about. Uh, I mean, he's talking about now the mood of the customer and how to uh, um, uh, real-time interact and respond to these needs. We have part of our AI strategy, we have current uh, uh, use cases that we're very excited about. For example, the surveys today that we analyze, we analyze using generative AI, open AI, Azure services. And that has really transformed the game for us to a next level because we're a data-driven organization. So the data of the surveys are the foundation of our data. So now imagine we can ask open-ended questions very freely. And with that capability, we're getting insights right, left, and center from data points that otherwise we would have, we would have never imagined. We're also using AI in servicing the customers at the call center. So when they call in, the AI gives you the next best action recommendation. So it, it knows your buying patterns, it knows your occupation, and then offers you products accordingly. Um, the uh, AI use cases that are in the pipeline are as exciting, if not more. We have one for HR, where we feed it thousands of CVs, and we match it with one job description, and it gives you the top five most relevant uh, uh, CVs. And that's very important for us because we, want, uh, we have 3,000 employees, we have a lot of people on the ground that are doing customer facing, so we're constantly looking for the right talent. We have a use case for legal, where the AI is reviewing the legal uh, uh, contracts and it gives you uh, a notification, watch out for this clause, and it, it interacts with you. But the one that I'm probably the most excited about is the procurement one. Because you know we build big assets, we build theme parks, so uh, it is important that we nail that process properly. So we have a platform that we're looking into where we feed it all of our data of other bidders the price items, and it ingests it. And then you talk to it as if you're talking to an employee. And the cool thing is that the business is pushing us more than the technology themselves. Uh, and they are interested in this, so that helps a lot. And then you can ask it questions like, uh, casual questions. You, you ask it questions like, what area should I focus on? Can you please look into this uh, uh, type of assets, and so forth? So. Uh, these are the things that are, we are working on as part of the AI strategy. And yes, I believe this is the trend that will save the day in terms of the customer experience and efficiency. If I may add, I, I love when you said reducing the friction with the guests. So we have, if you, if you all, I'm sure you've been all to hotels, you've seen the guest room management system, and I'm sure 90% of people here, when they went tried to use the guest room management, they got pissed off <laughs> of how to deal with it. <laughs> And, and what we're trying to do here is, for example, in, in our Biltmore's. Uh, Biltmore is our luxury brand. Uh, it's the competitor of the likes of Ritz Carlton and Waldorf Astoria. And, and in Biltmore's, we're trying to have the guest room management system is there, but it's the back end. What you interface with is normal sockets, normal lights, normal switches, which guests prefer. Guests of this type of hotel, they prefer having normal switches. They don't want the fancy glass push button thing. And, and it's annoying, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> it's sometimes technology. It's better that you utilize the benefit of it without, getting, without trying to get your guests into having to deal with it. Uh, uh, I, I love the fact of, of uh, dealing with the procurement, for example. We're trying to, to control your supply chain. How can you improve your, your supply chain in the, in the region? Because we deal with the whole Middle East and Africa. And how can you expand, how can you help SMEs in your E to expand to other markets through your through su supporting them in going out supporting our sustainability goals. So th there is a lot to, to be done in innovation, yeah. uh, but I love the reduction of friction with guests. Yeah, th I think we, we uh, spoke about it briefly uh, yesterday. Is that uh, especially in hospitality, um, sometimes there is innovation just for the sake of innovation. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't really add anything to the guest experience. Like, what I want when I go into a hotel is just one button to turn off all the lights, and even that sometimes is, is, is hard, right? Or just USB-C um, uh, chargers next to the yep. bed. Um, no, very, uh, very good, thank you. Um, Hadi, uh, what are you guys doing in, uh, in terms of AI? 
uh, we're working on it, as uh, the, guy, the other gentleman said, uh, procurement is one of the main yeah. things. Uh, having the right experience, especially in the rooms, whether it's a five star, four star, three star uh, product. Um, I can imagine procurement is important for the size of your organization. Yes, because yeah. we have around 1,500 keys uh, globally. So it's a decent sized operation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, very, very good. Yeah. Um, we have two, uh, two minutes left, three minutes left. Uh, just wanted to maybe, uh, any of you can shine some light on how you really get um, support internally um, for your uh, technology uh, investments. and and how innovation is kind of driven from the inside? There are, there are two streams. There's downstream and upstream. So we get support through the data that we collect. So data can talk for itself. Yeah. Uh, we, we're implementing a new system in all our hotels that will measure everything, including staff productivity. So we know if, if I have a, a director of engineering in, uh, in a hotel, and he's saying that he's understaffed, I can pull his, producti his department productivity report, and if they're supposed to work 500 hours, and they have been productive for 700 hours, then he, he might need two people more. So then I can add. Or if, he, if they are actually their productivity is 300 hours, then he's just not, his people is not productive. So how can we control? Uh, how can we improve his uh, his, uh, his, their, his staff productivity? The the other thing that which is uh, most important because we, we deal with multiple uh, uh, system integrators and multiple uh, uh, business partners. But we, our role is to make sure that they all can talk together because to improve our process flow. Uh, the, the store management system needs to talk to the procurement system, need to talk to the finance system, that need to talk to the PMS, the PMS need to talk to the uh, uh, engineering system and the housekeeping system and so on. And all serves into the guest experience which all happens in the back end without the guest noticing mm -hmm. any of this happen. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Raad, um, we spoke about it obviously a little bit about um, how you get that internal um, uh, sponsorship. Um, how, do you, how do you do that? Well, a couple of things, but I think uh, we're very lucky, okay, for a couple of reasons. Number one, we have a group CEO who's a, a technology guru and a technology background, so that helps, right? That helps, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is that whenever we look at our strategies, we never look at the customer, uh, at the uh, competition, uh, forgive me, it, it always somehow maps to uh, some kind of a technology enablement. Yeah. And that's always working to our advantage. And finally, as technology leaders, we have to master the art of storytelling. And this is something that, uh, with experience, I learned to pay more attention to. Uh, to tell the story, to connect the dots for your sponsors, for your investors, and just uh, exert more energy on that. When you do, you will be able to get the support, especially that now the trend worldwide is very technology driven. Well, thank you very much. Well, um, on that note, um, I'd like to thank my panelists. Thank you very much for your insights. Thank you. Um, I guess we'll have to uh, leave the stage for the next one, but uh, sure. it was uh, very good having this conversation with you. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.